Designing golf courses is my total expression and appreciation for the game. My playing career can only go on for so long, but what I have learned can be put onto this piece of ground for a long time, way beyond my golf game and my lifetime. You think about Dad and all the golf courses he's designed. I mean, uh, you know, we're close to 400 golf courses worldwide. Uh, our company, Dad's had his, his fingerprints in all of them, but if you could pick one that tells more about Jack Nicklaus, it would be Muirfield Village. When my dad was 26 years old, he first had the vision of doing Muirfield Village in his hometown. And I think they bought the property in 1968. My dad's 28 years old. Creating Muirfield Village was, uh, a good shot. the name was, we didn't know what the name was going to be, but what I did at, at uh, Muirfield in Scotland in 66 was something very, very special to me. And not to name it Muirfield, but to name it Muirfield Village uh, was something that I thought was, was appropriate. It had been so much in my life. From going back, you know, when we were first building the golf course in the mud, and I was just a little guy too. Uh, you know, I was in my early teens uh, to what it is today is an unbelievable transformation. Uh, it took us to the time of starting to look at land and do everything. It took us about eight years to get there. We got there. When my dad first uh, mentioned that he wanted to you know, come back to Muirfield Village. I kind of shook my head. I'm like, are you kidding me, Dad? This is one of the greatest golf courses of, in my opinion, of all time. And, uh, but then as I started hearing his thoughts and his process on what he wanted to do, uh, absolutely amazing. He's always had the ability to, you know, step back and see things from 30,000 feet. My legacy really is here uh, as it relates to tournament golf. This is what the world sees on television. And this is what uh, the players see. This is what, this is set up for people to come here and see it and play it. And I'm very proud that the, the city of Dublin really was created more because of Muirfield than anything else. Now it's a very, very vibrant community. The, the relationship that Jack and Barbara have with the local community, it's a love affair. They, they have mutual respect. Um, there's no way we could host this golf tournament if we didn't get the support from our local community. You know, this last year, uh, we, we, we had some things that we'd like to made better on the golf course, so uh, I said, let's, uh, let's see if we can fix those things. It's, it's a feeling of, uh, uh, I feel like I maybe had like one, probably one last bite at the apple, so I want to make sure that that bite was a good bite, and one that's uh, going to be here and play, play pretty much the same for a long time. Where that cup is, where that cup is, and your green comes down in and comes back, but it comes back, the green cut drops in the front a little bit, and then it comes back up into a pitch back here so that we have a, you know, three, three and a half or whatever it is coming off of here. So you got, so you got a quick guy sitting it in here and he hits it long. He's got a tough chip going back. It all started on Sunday of last year's memorial. Uh, he, he mentioned to me that he, he might want to redo the greens, and um, he just doesn't like the Poanya anymore. He said, Jack, if we're going to do that, he said, I really want to go down and get the, get the mix right. You know the mix is not right. I said, I know it's not right, but you know I think we can live with it. He said, no, let's don't do that. Let's, let's do it right. We went for you know one of the rides like we did yesterday. It was three or four hours on the golf course, and at the end of that trip, he said, you know what? I'm not getting any younger, and um, I'd really like to do this. Okay, we don't really have anything at 12, do we? Do you want me to create? Want me to create something? Started talking about fairway bunkers and greenside bunkers and regrassing the fairways and rebuilding tees. How that relates to the tour, how that relates to the member. Um, but this is going to be pretty special. It's going to be um, a chance for him to to put his last touch on everything that he wants to see here for forever. And I really don't think when we're done with it, it's going to be a tougher golf course. It's just going to be a better golf. And that's what I want. I want a better golf course for the membership. The more conservative you are laying it back, the better pitch you'll have. The more aggressive you get, the more you miss it, the harder pitch you're going to have. Hello. Gotcha. I mean, that, that bridge, that bridge is probably right back in here. Yep, so we're moving the bridge. bridge. Yeah, you got to move the bridge. I mean, I'm why, talking why about, do, why do we I'm talking about the next bridge. I, yeah, I get you now. You bail to that bunker, you got to play a bunker shot 
-hmm. over this onto a slope going towards the water. Mm -hmm. This is really sadistic, you know. On the right edge of this creek bed to move over 15 feet. These two right. trees here are pretty important too. Yes. I'm observing a lot right now uh, with, with the energy level that mom and dad still possess, uh, which is phenomenal to me. It's, it's, it's a fun process to watch, and I'm doing a lot of watching right now. This is dad's real baby. Uh, it's his flagship golf course. Yeah. Now, now if it stops and goes over, then it runs down the hill. Now you gotta be a little careful. We could actually put a little fairway there if we wanted to, which would help the membership. I mean, my, my first choice is to do the golf course for its membership. Uh, make sure that the members can play the golf course. I haven't done anything stupid for them. But also, uh, that I have the ability to move the tees back, hide the pins, and have a, uh, a, a memorial tournament. And so, in doing that, uh, you know, you've got, you got a hard combination of different things. You see places where, you know, the, the pro will never hit it. So you give, so you give leeway in making it user friendly for the average golfer. And that's what you do all through the golf course, make it a real fun, playable golf course. It's the first golf course that I know that was laid out for tournament golf. Not only for the players, I think if you look at Jack's history and his personality type, what he's doing is just what is in him to do, which is make things better, uh, evolve with the times, Whatever changes he's making to the course right now, I know a couple things without even having seen it. An incredible amount of intelligence and forethought went into right doing it. That's again. one. And it's going to be done the right way, too. And anybody who knows anything about Jack Nicholas would say that because he's got a lifetime of doing exactly that. See, then I could have my fairway. This here will, will limit the guys how far they can drive it. They gotta be a little careful. To me, what differentiated Jack Nicklaus in the 80s and 90s from the other lead architects was that his courses always enjoyed a strong strategic component. And when you saw him play, you know, that's how he approached the game. It was a tactical approach where he was trying to hit specific areas and specific fairways and then place the ball on green. So it's no surprise that his designs then reflected that. It would seem to me that the best shot would be a high, fairly high, slant, gently right to left. It was played around the water, work it to the hole. It's so meaningful to work for somebody like Jack Nicklaus because he's known as being a golf icon, but people don't really understand how good of a designer he is. And I think from his playing career, the strategy that he has on a golf course is second to none. When we first started, when Jack played competitively, we really designed from the back tee. Uh, here recently, uh, we don't do that fun. quite as much because the distance uh, gains by the elite players, players who can swing the club over, you know, 105 miles an hour, is just getting so out of hand. Looking at it from an athlete perspective, uh, from a body performance perspective, there's a lot more people nowadays that are more prone to hitting it farther because of their workout regimen. There's almost everyone on the PGA Tour is working out now. Players are undoubtedly getting stronger, they're more athletic. Um, they're better trained uh, than they were 10, 20 years ago. Um, the equipment is having the golf ball go further and further. Um, so we have to make some adjustments for that. And what we've done, we've taken some tees back. We've taken some bunkers further down the hole and tried to, tried to pinch uh, our landing areas out from 300 yards and on. Good God, they, you know, one guy drove it 27 yards from the hole. Yeah. Shambo did one round. I've got my ideas of how I want the golf course to be. And Jackie supported most of my ideas of what we wanted to try to do and to try to take the golf course and, and have it uh, evolve, the tournament evolve. Uh, I think it's more than statistics. You know, Jack always emphasizes a, a key part to his designs is that golfer needs to be able to think his way around the golf course. So we would hope that, uh, or at least we try, even though we try hard not to have a similar look, we try to introduce that uh, part of thinking your way around the golf course on all our golf courses. Well, to me, the study of golf architecture is akin to the study of art. The primary difference is, 
If an artist does a painting that's one foot by two foot and you don't happen to like it, it's no big deal. But with golf courses, there are roughly about 40,000 of them around the world of all different shapes and sizes. And if on average, just on average, each took up 100 acres, that's four million acres. It is art. It's, uh, you know, you're always trying to create and you're always challenged to be better. Uh, but it's a responsibility because, uh, you know, it's not inexpensive to move dirt around and create a golf course. So uh, I love it. Um, we've got an amazing group here at Nicholas Design. Okay, so just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, the design process. This is my field book from the, the project, your Field Village 2020. Uh, it's got Jack's sketches, plans, as built, everything in it. He's going to study the shot link data over time. He still thinks we may want to add another long bumper here, just in case. So we got that in our back pocket. We all design around our own eye and our own vision. Why would I put in a bunker that I think is ugly? And that's the beautiful thing about architecture and different golf architects. Everybody has a different vision and a different view of how, how to do it. And at Muirfield, you know, that's Jack's babies. That, that's like Donald Ross's Pinehurst number two or Pete Dye's Crooked Stick. You know, this is Jack's baby, his home course. So I knew that Jack had very, very definitive ideas what he wanted. I so, think this green is, if you just grasped it right now, I'd be quite happy with it. Good. You got to bring the bunker in over there. That's about it, isn't it? Right. You got to bring the bunker into the green, and the green will, what, like 20, 20 feet there or something? It'll do this. Now you got this little transition that comes off of here. You got a reason for your transition right there. And this bunker here sort of wraps around that point. Right. Yeah, right in there somewhere. Point three that way. Really? Yes. Wow. This is pretty pretty cool. Guy hit it strong up in the air and he's got a tough chip. Yeah. Jack has an eye where he could look at a blank sheet of paper and tell you exactly where he wants to go. It's phenomenal to watch his vision. Uh, his designs are, are rarely easy. Uh, they're playable, but they're challenging. And he's, he's taken that to the next level at Muirfield Village, which was already one of the more difficult and better respected courses on tour. To link yourself to the Jack Nicklaus legacy in a small way like that is, is still a huge thing. And uh, one of the proudest moments of my career, for sure. He played so difficult <laughs> this past year that I would like to see how it's gonna be and what the changes they've done uh, have been. I bet being Mr. Nicholas, He's done some wonderful changes. It's a different golf course, totally different golf course. You know, they'll, they'll see it right away. But I made major changes on one, moved the green back about 30 yards, uh, changed the whole bunkering on the, on the tee shot. Uh, number three, moved the tee down the hill, changed the green totally. Four, the four is a new green. See, it used to be a smaller screen on the golf course, now it's the largest. Five, I moved the green back 30 yards into the left, changed the hole, changed the lake, changed the tee shot. Six, I lengthened a little bit, but I didn't change, materially changed the hole. Seven, I changed the tee shot, changed the whole green area and the whole, the whole green, how it worked and how it flowed. Uh, eight, I didn't change much. And nine, I just added a pin position to the right. And 10 is a whole new green. 11 is a whole new green. 15 is a whole new hole. Lowered the fairway maybe 20 feet, moved it to the left, bunkered the right, brought the creek in play. 16th green will look about the same, but the green now will accept a golf ball. And 18, all we did was just lower the back back of the green to create, create some pin placements in the back of the green, but that's quite a bit. I, I just gotta tell you, you know, working with your father, at least for me, it's a dream. To be able to share thoughts with him, uh, who not only is, you know, the goat in golf, but I think he's the goat in golf course design. He's amazing. Well, Jack, too, was very instrumental in a lot that we did here. I, I credit Jackie what we did at number 15. He was his suggestion to drop the fairway. You know, there's, there's a variety of things that he did out there. And he worked with me through the whole process to make sure that it's right. I'm riding around with him in the same golf cart. And, and not only is it a great education for me, it's, it's nostalgic for me as well. To, you know, Dad's 80 years old and he's still got all the energy in the world to do what he does. And it's just it's fun for me to watch him do that. It's a special time. You know, there's so much of dad's legacy, mom's legacy. It's hard to mention dad without mentioning mom. And, uh, you know, everything is 
as modern as you can get it right now. Dad has kept it up to date and uh, it's going to be part of my responsibility to, to maintain uh, the golf course, keep it modern, uh, you know, uh, keep everybody motivated. Well, I want people to walk away and say, man, you know, that is really a great golf course. What time can I play this again, again tomorrow? I want everybody to want to come back and because, you know, I know it's a strong golf course, but it's also a fair golf course. I don't really think there'd be a better golf course in the country. Uh, shot values, tee shots, second shots, around the green, than any course in the country. I can't imagine anybody being any, being any better than what this golf course is. Uh, that's my opinion of what, you know, how the golf course should be and what it should play. And uh, does it match up to what I was trying to do, I say, 54 years ago? You bet.